Good day, YouTube. Hutch Touchboard Farms here. Uh, working on a different project today. Going to replace our sink, faucet, and countertop. Uh, ruined the uh, sink a couple months back with epoxy. Wife was not too impressed. So going to try to surprise her while she's at work. So I head down to the local Home Depot, pick up a birch butcher block that I'm going to use. Next, I start clearing out the laundry room, getting things out of the way, off the countertops, out of the cabinets, so I have good, easy access uh, while doing the project. I now am uh, removing all of the cleaning supplies out from underneath our sink. Um, I am amazed with how much we have. Seems like we have about three of everything. Not quite sure why the wife continues to buy more, uh, but hey, we'll always be ready. Once underneath the sink's cleared out, I then shut the water valves off and loosen up all the plumbing so I can remove the sink. With the sink removed came the hardest part of the project and that was getting the laminate countertop removed. I was paying special attention to not crack or break any of the tiles uh, while doing so because we were planning on keeping those. At this point I'm just kind of scratching my head trying to figure out how I'm going to get this countertop off and decide just to use brute force uh, but still struggling. I decided to just start yanking on it, see if I can get it to pop loose, and finally it comes off, thank goodness. But that was definitely the worst part of the project. I then grab a crowbar and remove all the nails that were attached to the countertop, so I have a nice flat surface to put the new countertop on. Once the nails are gone, I take my measurements so I know exactly where to cut the countertop uh, to make it fit. Then out to the shop, aka my garage, and I grab the butcher block out of the back of my truck and bring it over to my outfeed table. I then measure the length that I want to cut the butcher block. Uh, it's always a good idea when doing this to go back and check your measurements again before you make a, a cut on a more expensive piece of wood uh, that's going to cost you money. I throw the foam backing underneath the butcher block uh, and then use my track saw uh, to hopefully make a good accurate straight cut. On the shorter cuts I will typically not use my clamps and just uh, put downward pressure on the track saw track and uh, seems to make a nice cut. The butcher block came pre-sanded to 120 grit. I went over it a few times all the way up to 220 grit just to make sure I had a nice smooth surface. At this point I realized I didn't have my dust collector on so I went and turned that on to help uh, with the managing dust in the shop. I then sand all the edges, especially the two that will be showing, just so they're nice and smooth as well. As I was sanding, I realized the top radius wasn't very consistent, so I grabbed my trim router and a quarter inch round over bit and just went over the two edges that will be showing to make them nice and consistent.
I then sand over the edges again and the area that I just used the round over bit on just to make sure everything's nice and smooth. At this point I grab the new sink and start laying out exactly where it's going to go on the butcher block to make sure that it's in the right spot once it goes back into the cabinet. I then put blue painters tape down in the area where I'm going to make the cut with the jigsaw just to keep from having too much tear out. Once the blue painters tape is down, I then redraw the lines over the blue painters tape so I know exactly where to cut. Once the lines are made, I then take a bit and drill through the butcher block to help give me a starting point with the jigsaw. I then start making my first cut with the jigsaw following the drawn line on the blue painters tape. Uh, having some difficulty making this cut, I think uh, there's two reasons. One is I'm going cross cut which is going to be a little more difficult. And two, I picked a jigsaw blade that's probably not the best for this application. The jigsaw blade I was using had a lot of small teeth and it just wasn't doing the job here. So after this first cut I decided to switch to a blade that had fewer teeth but they were larger and it seemed to do a better job. I also decided to drill another jigsaw access hole on the opposite corner from the previous one. Remember when using a jigsaw, it's always best practice to make sure that the blade is completely stopped before pulling it out of the piece of wood. Uh, I do still uh, fail to do this from time to time. It usually results in a broken or bent jigsaw blade, but it also could injure yourself. I then clean up the corners with the jigsaw and remove the painter's tape and just like that we now have a hole for the sink. Test fitting the sink here just to make sure it fits. Looks good. I then water pop the butcher block to help bring the grain out uh, before I do a final round of sanding. While I'm waiting for the butcher block to dry I'm going to add a few pocket holes into the face frame and the carcass of this cabinet just to help um, beef it up and make it a little sturdier. I countersink some holes on the four corner tabs uh, that will then um, accept screws up into the butcher block. Test fit the butcher block by putting it in place on top of the cabinet. Uh, and realized something I expected was going to happen, that the butcher block's a little thicker than what the laminate countertop was, uh, so therefore it does not slide underneath the tile. So I'm gonna have to cut out a little bit tab uh, to help um, clear that gap. To make these two cuts, I'm going to use my track saw here on the longer cut and then after the track saw makes its cut, I'm gonna come back with my Japanese pull saw and uh, cut the rest of this tab out with it. Once I made the cuts, I grabbed my finished sander to sand everything smooth. Problem is, is I don't actually have sandpaper on it. Uh, so once I realized that, put sandpaper on it, it worked much better. Uh, you'll have to forgive me as I'm going to blame heat on this one since it's about 95 degrees out today. I then hand sanded all the edges to get everything nice and smooth and uniform. Put the butcher block back in place and this time it fit he like a glove. And then took my drill and attached the screws to the countertop to secure it in place. Sounds 
Once the countertop was in place, next step was to drill the holes for the faucet. Uh, in this case, I'm using a single hole faucet, a one and a half inch hole, and then a one and an eighth inch hole for my hand wash pump. The Milwaukee carbide bit worked much better. Next, I installed the faucet to the sink. And then dry fit the sink onto the countertop, make sure everything looks good before applying a ring of silicone around the sink, about a quarter inch from the hole uh, that will help seal the sink. Now that the sink's in place, I take a wet rag and go all the way around the base of the sink uh, just to make sure I clean up any residue that might be left over. After that, I reconnect all the water hoses and turn on the water valves. And there you go, got a working sink. I then caulk the entire tile line. Uh, that gives a nice finished look in between the butcher block and the tile. Once the caulk has dried, I then apply three layers of butcher block oil, uh, wiping it on and then an hour later wiping it back off and reapplying. I also put down a waterproof mat that will sit underneath the espresso machine and the coffee maker just to keep from extra water pooling up on the butcher block. Well, that's a wrap on this project. I uh, wash my hands, clean up, and wait for the wife to get home from work. Hopefully she approves and uh, likes it. All in this project cost about $350. I purchased the butcher block from Home Depot and the rest of the items off of Amazon. I hope you enjoyed the video, and if you did, like, comment, and subscribe, and we'll see you on the next one.